Hey, so it's me, Abby, again, from Walking With The Whales. Um, so this is going to be one of many videos in relation to my current recovery from surgery that I had recently. Um, so this video is going to give you an art. Uh, this is our first video apart from our introduction. This video is going to give you an idea of what we are going to talk about. Um, so the, at the minute it will be more about my recovery, but also my other symptoms I'm facing due to recovery. Um, there will be videos that I do about my family, about days out, and potentially reviewing um, attractions and days out and things like that that aren't accessible. Um, and giving you some ideas of the best places to do, best things to do, best things not to do in a wheelchair with kids. Um, so I'm going to talk about a lot of things over these videos. I'm aiming to do two a week. Please don't hold me to that. My aim was to do a blog a week and that has just failed miserably thanks to lockdown. So uh, without further ado, let me just get into this. Um, so on Wednesday the 24th of June, I so last Wednesday, today's now Saturday, day three. Um, I went to Spire Hospital in Portsmouth and had a hip scope. Um, I've been waiting for this operation for about two years. Um, it was the end, middle of middle to the end of May. I got a phone call saying, "Would you like your surgery?" And I was jumped at the chance. There was things I've had to do in the lead up to my surgery. So I was isolated for two weeks prior to my surgery, which meant I was isolated on my birthday. But I have to say, my husband, um, so his name's Sam. So if I say Sam, you guys know who I'm on about. So Sam went above and beyond. He got me party hats. Uh, we had little masks. He put banners up. Um, I had a cake. I've got to say that cake wasn't that great. It was a flake, Cadbury's flake cake um, from Tesco's. And it was about eight quid, but it was crap. But anyway. Regardless of that. But no, he really made the effort for my birthday because I couldn't go out, I couldn't do anything, I couldn't do anything that I planned. I wanted to go for a bike ride on my birthday, but obviously I couldn't leave the house, which sucked. So, but no, it was it was good. We made it what it, what it was. Um, so I was isolating for two weeks prior to my operation. Um, the only time I was allowed to leave the house was on Monday the 22nd of June to have my COVID test. And oh my Lord, for anyone who hasn't had that, it is horrible. Please don't say, please don't take this as me trying to tell you not to have it done. If you get contacted by the NHS Track and Trace, please get your COVID test done. That's the most I can say. And please isolate because it is so, so important. Especially for people who've got hidden disabilities. You won't necessarily know that they are at higher risk. Like people like myself with organ issues, I'm a bit higher risk. So please, if you are given the chance to get your COVID test done, please get it done and isolate if you're showing any sign of symptoms. So that was going to my left house. I literally went from my house into my car, or oh, our car, it's my car. It's my motability car, yeah, I don't drive because of my seizures, but my husband does, anyway. Um, so we drove down to Queen Alexandra Hospital in Portsmouth. Um, I have a COVID test done, but they stick this swab. So, uh, they've got to swab the back of your tonsils. So as you can imagine, it makes you want to throw up. And they shove it so far up your nose. No word of a lie, if, if I lift my glasses, it felt like it was up here. It, it was so painful. And then all of that evening and the following day, my nose just kept running. It was horrible. But and so that was the only time I left the house. Um, and so I had that done on the on Monday the 22nd. Um, on Tuesday, I had multiple phone calls to confirm that I didn't have any signs of COVID. Firm, I felt well when um, to go through pre-op and everything else. And I've got to say, they were really, really, they took their time with me. I've got to say, they were brilliant. Um, so due to everything that's going on, I couldn't have my operation at Queen Alexandra Hospital, which is my local NHS. Um, so I'm, I was lucky enough to be offered to have it done at Spire Hospital in Portsmouth, which, which is actually a private hospital. Uh, but I don't know if you're aware, but all private hospitals have been commandeered, in their words to me, uh, by the NHS for things like this at the minute. So I've had scans done before I went into isolation for my knee, because I've torn my cartilage in my knee, um, and I had to have scan and some other tests done. And that has all been done like Nuffield Hospital um, in Eastleigh as well. So all the private hospitals are all being used for non-emergent cases, if it makes sense, like myself. Um, so I went in on Wednesday, I had to get up 
at half past four because they told me I had to take my meds before I came in. But I wasn't allowed to eat. I wasn't allowed to eat past midnight, but I wasn't allowed to drink past 5 a.m. So it meant I had to get up at half past four to take my medication. So I was tired. So, but nerves got the best of me anyway. So I was fine. I was up. Um, got myself ready and then Alex, my little boy, woke up. He was up at five, half five, like normal. And then I'd wake Sam and Becca up at six. So Becca's my seven-year-old. Um, Alex is my three-year-old. So as I say new names, I will explain who they are. Um, so I went in, Sam dropped me down there. Well, I got there for 10 to seven, taken straight up. Went into this white tent and they scanned me and it felt like they were gonna shoot me with a laser beam, but it wasn't, it was a thermometer. But it looked like a laser gun out of like Men in Black. It was really weird. Uh, so I was given, had my temperature check, that was fine, given a face mask, then I had to sit in a certain chair, I wasn't allowed to sort of stand up and move around, I had to sit in a certain chair, I was like, right, that's fine. Um, and then I was taken down to my room, obviously I was on crutches at the time because it was my knee and my leg. Um, so I had my backpack and then the nurse carried my other bag, my dressing gown, and taken down to my room. I, I've got a video of my room and I will put it onto the end of this video so you guys can see it. And I have stayed in hotels that are worse than this hotel room, worse than this hospital room. It was so nice. So I went in, had my hospital bed like normal, and then there's a desk with a vanity style mirror, big TV, there was a safe, bedside units, you know, it didn't feel like hospital at all. And then I had my own ensuite, which had a bath and shower, and it was it was just really nice. Um so they were doing like my post-op stuff, like blood pressure, everything seemed fine. Um, and then at about 20 to nine, the nurse came in and said, you need to have a shower. I was like, I had a shower last night. I washed my hair and everything else, I'm all clean. No, no, you need to have a shower. Okay, that's fine. Um, I said, I had to have a shower with this antiseptic gel. Anyway, I dyed my hair and dyed my hair pink. Um, but you can see my roots at the minute. You can't read because the light I've got. Let me see if I can move the light. There you go. So I, I'm naturally a redhead. Um, ginger and proud for anyone out there. Uh, so I went down my hair pink for the minute because uh, it's just something I want to do. So anyway, sorry, I've got to adjust my light now. It's really annoying me. So I had to have a shower and I had to wash my hair and this stuff. And like, this stuff's made my hair feel so horrible, but I now can't wash my hair until the 10th of Jul July. Unless, but I... Uh, Let's just not get into that. Um, so I've then washed my hair. I've dyed one of their towels pink from my hair dye. Because uh, it's sort of a wash in, wash out, but it takes like 12 to 14 washes. It's Colour Freedom, um, I think it's Knight and Wise, Knight and Wilson, Colour Freedom from Superdrug. It is amazing, I love it. Um, anyway, I'll pop the link into it for that below if anyone wants to know it. So anyway, I dyed their towel pink. I was taken straight down to theatre um, and again dyed their towel, dyed all the pillows pink. And I went, I was I was put to sleep really quickly. I was taken so from my room straight into theatre. Within five minutes, I had the mask on my face and I was going to sleep. And the next thing I remember is waking up from recovery. So this operation was meant to be, I was told half hour, 45 minutes of this operation. Um, so I obviously told Sam and my mum that I was going down at nine, so they knew that. They're like, right, okay, we should we should hear something by about eleven. Um, twelve o'clock came, and they hadn't heard anything. My mum obviously phoned Sam, and I was like, have you heard anything? And he was like, no. Obviously, this is what he's told me. So he then phoned the hospital to find out what's going on, and it turns out I was in recovery. So this operation ended up being two hours long. So that tells you they've done quite a lot. Um, as I've come round from anaesthetic, I've had a seizure. Um, I was freezing cold, so I've had to have like called a bear blanket. It's like it's almost like a giant pillowcase that's sealed up apart from this little hole, and they attach this thing that looks like a Hoover, and it pumps hot air in to keep warm you up. And it, oh, it was lush. So I was once that was all right. I was taken back to my room, and but there was a problem with my stats, my oxygen levels from the little clip thingy. So usually they say they like it above 95. Uh, mine was in the 80s from what I remember. And it, it was, 
I didn't feel well, I felt tired, and so they, I had like the mask and that on, and stats regularly, and luckily everything seemed to sort itself out, and I was alright, um, so I was then told about four o'clock, right, you can go home, so Sam came and picked me up, and I was taken out to the car, and I wasn't allowed to stand up, Obviously, I'd been told that I could wait there with crutches and that was fine, sort of thing. I do ease myself back into walking, that's fine. But anyway, this porter, he was like, nope, you have to stay in the wheelchair. You've got to put your hands on the inside of the passenger door window and shimmy yourself over that way. You can't stand up. I was like, right, okay, a bit weird, but yeah. So I then came home and I just felt really tired that day because obviously I'd had anaesthetic, I'd been up early and... I felt all right when I first got home because um, during the surgery they told me I had something like 260 milli milligrams of fentanyl, uh, 0.5 milligrams of ketamine um, as well as paracetamol IV and as well as my, I had my normal meds as well which is tramadol, gabapentin and zapane. So I was fairly dosed up. Uh, anyway, so in the evening you I could really tell when the hospital meds had worn off because the pain hit. Prior to the surgery, they told me my this recovery from this would be more painful than when I had my hip replacement. I didn't believe them, but I wish I did. It has been hell. So Wednesday, obviously, I was really uncomfortable. I was really tired. I fell asleep on the sofa. Uh, so Sam took me up to bed. I had a horrible night. I had about two, three hours sleep, and I was taking meds every four hours throughout the night as well to try and help. And it was, it didn't help where it was so hot. Um. And then obviously got up on Thursday. Um, now knowing that I can go out, obviously I, I was like, right, okay, I'd like to get out of the house for a little bit. And we popped to Fairham, our local shopping centre. Picked up, and I, I went in my wheelchair, so I was safe and I was okay and med regular medication. And at this point, my GP had already increased my gabapentin from 600 milligrams three times a day to 900. So again, quite strong meds. And I felt okay. Um, and then we went down to Salsi and we were just walking on the seafront to get an ice cream. And I was sat down, we were out for about an hour or two, and I sat down with driver. I walked on my crutches for about 10 minutes in total. Um, but the pain got too bad, so I sat down and I was fine taking medication. And I, I felt fine. And I just started to feel a bit tired, so I was like, all right, we can go home. So we went home and, and then I went to get up out of the car and oh my lord. I went to get up out of my chair to get into the car and the pain got so intense all of a sudden that I was reaching um, and it was it was horrible. So I went home and I just chilled out and relaxed, did nothing but the pain was absolutely unbearable. My nurse phoned that night and they said um, if it's that bad to phone my GP Friday morning and get morphine. Um, so again, went to bed Thursday night and I had about three hours sleep. We, we went up to bed, we didn't go up to bed till 12 o'clock because I'd taken tablets at 8, so I could take tablets again at 12. So I took them, then we went straight to bed. And I think I fell asleep fairly quickly. And then I woke up about half past three. And obviously I could take meds from four, but I'd forgotten to bring my med bag upstairs. So I was like, right, okay. I laid there and I tried to go to sleep. And about half past four came. And I was like, I can't do this anymore. So I got up and I come downstairs, took my medication, and I just sat on the sofa. Um, and I was in so much pain. It was unreal. So I phoned the doctors at 8 o'clock to get morphine. Spoke to them, and I was told, this is the only bottle you're getting. You only had a hip or the scope. I was like, well, no, it wasn't just a hip or the scope. What they end up doing... Sorry, I haven't actually explained this. So um, hip or the scope is where they go and investigate for a keyhole surgery. So what they end up doing, um, due to my vascular crisis my other hip, they said they were going to investigate a bit more. So they went in and they ended up doing a decompression of the hip um, to prevent a vascular crisis. They removed a small amount of arthritis from the hip itself, um, fixed the labrum tear with anchors, and they also shaved down some bone to prevent bone on bone grinding. So they've done everything they can to sort of fix the current issue with the labrum tear and they've done everything they can to prevent it from going into a vascular crisis. Obviously in the future it may well still happen. So I've just got to wait and see. Sorry, if I sound really husky at times, it's because from where I had the tube down my throat Wednesday, I've had a bit of a sore throat since. I apologise. Um, 
So that's what they actually did. And when I explained that to her, she was like, oh, well, you're only having one bottle. And I was like, right, okay, that's fine. I'll see how I go. So obviously now I'm on um, 900 milligrams of gabapentin three times a day, 100 milligrams of tramadol four times a day, and I think 1,000 milligrams of zapping four, four times a day. Um, and then obviously I've now got morphine, which I can take between 2.5 to 5 milliliters as and when needed. Uh, so yesterday I took a total, I think it was... I took two lots of 2.5 and then just before bed I took three to sort of help me through the night and oh my lord it helped. I slept through, I didn't get up to 8 o'clock this morning, it was bliss. So, but anyway, yesterday I um, I just chilled out at home. We popped to Tesco's because obviously I still had birthday money that I needed to pay into my bank account because I'm, I'm with Tesco's. But they didn't, they wouldn't let Sam pay it in so we're like right okay I'll go in my chair. And we literally just went and paid the money and then came home. And it was just so I could buy some stuff. I've ordered some stuff off Amazon, which is just arrived. Embroidery kit, if anyone's interested. Um, so, yesterday the pain was really intense. Um, random bursting into tears. Uh, getting up and down from the toilet is agony. And like, if the toilet rolls on the floor, for argument's sake, because our downstairs toilet's been redone at the minute, um, I can't pick it up, it's so painful. So last night, obviously went to bed, took morphine, and I managed to sleep through. I woke up at eight o'clock this morning, got up, come downstairs in my pajamas, and then um, my mum popped round to see us, and it was it was nice seeing her, and then I got myself dressed. So I'm in jeans, and I've got, I've got a bra today and t-shirt and done my makeup and just shoved my hair up um but today the pain pain's different today it's i've got a, i've got pain in my right hip and my right thigh obviously i've got a hip replacement on that side with it and it's i've got a non non-cemented replacement so it's just sort of been hammered into my thigh so every so often you get movement in that makes it ache so i think Obviously, at the minute, I'm having to put a lot of pressure through that leg. And it's made that feel a bit unstable. And also, I've got torn cartilage in my right knee, which is flaring up again, which is painful. And then I've also got the operation on my left hip. But no, it's my whole of my left thigh. I've got really weird sensations, like half numb. Um, and you can tell it's bruised under the skin. You touch it, it's really sensitive. Um, at the end of this video, I'll put like the photos that I've been taking to document its recovery. Um, so if you're squirmish, I'd say stop this video when I say bye, uh, because it's it's not blood as such, it's just like when well, it's just like my stitches and that, so but I don't want anyone to watch it who doesn't feel comfortable with that. So I'll let you know when to stop if you don't like that sort of thing. But no, today I'm I'm able to cope with the pain. I don't I haven't needed any morphine today, which I'm thankful for. Um, I reckon I'm starting to, I've just taken my meds about an hour ago now. Um, so I reckon I'll probably need, um, I might need morphine to top up later because I'm start. I'm, I'm very sore at the minute. I don't know if that's where I'm sat at my desk, but I'm a bit uncomfortable. But no, at the minute I would, I can't comment on whether or not this has worked. I'm not going to know whether or not this surgery is a success um, until around the 12 week mark. I've obviously, I'm still waiting on physio. I'm still on a lot of medication. I'm, my aim, obviously, I've got a lot of other things going on with my body. I'd like to be able to come off some of my pain, pain relief um, in the next couple of months and go from there sort of thing. But no, pain today, it's not too bad. Um, ice pack has been an absolute joy. I've obviously had that on the incision site itself, which has really helped. Um, and little things like, I've got my crutches, I've got mod handles, they help. And also, one of the items that we sell on our eBay shop and our website is cup holders. So this is my this, this is one of my crutches. Um, and this cup holder is really like easy to detach. But at the minute, it's... Really, really come in handy for me, um, and obviously I've got one on my crutches, one on my walking stick, and one on my wheelchair. I've actually got two to go on my wheelchair, one next to me, and then one at the back. So if Sam's got a coffee or a can of coke or whatever, and he's pushing me, he can put it in his cup holder, and I've got cup holder for me. Um, but no, we sell them 
um, I can put, I'll pop the link for our eBay um, in the comment section below in regards to buying, purchasing one of them. But it's like coming up the stairs at the minute, I can't, I'm using two crutches, so I can't carry like a bottle of juice for bed or uh, anything like that. So it's been really handy if I had to put it in the cup holder and then I'm not having to worry about that. And it holds, it, it expands to quite big. So I, sorry, let me, this cup's empty. So I use a tumbler cup a lot of the time. Um, I have one upstairs and one downstairs. So my office is upstairs. Um, but no, so that fits in there really easily. It's easy to go in and it's secure as well. So that's been a godsend for me at the minute. And it's given me that little bit of independence to be able to do a drink myself. I can't carry a plate in at the minute. Um, I can't really cook or anything like that. So being able to carry my own cup or my own bottle of juice has been fantastic. Um, but no, so recovery at the minute, it's it's hard. Um, and I'm in a lot of pain. Um, starting to become in a lot of pain right now. So I'm going to sign off. Um, if anyone's got any questions, please comment below or visit our website, which is www.walkingwithwheels.co.uk um, or you can email us at info, I-N-F-O, at walkingwithwheels.co.uk and that's with an S on the end. Um, Instagram and Facebook is at walkingwithwheels um, and obviously you've got our YouTube channel now which you can comment on down below. Please, if you have questions about any of my conditions, our products, um, story, like my story, anything at all, please feel free to message us. Um, or if you just need someone to talk to, we're happy to help. So please do, we are here. Um, I'd say now if you're squeamish, click off now because we're about to add the videos on to the end. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.